Good afternoon, everybody. Nick here. It is 12.15 on this Wednesday, 12.01. We have made it to December. It is Advent Week 1. And we're just going to jump right into it. So will you please turn and sing with me number 240 of the Father's Love Begotten. There's the begotten in the world. The Father's love begotten, world began to be. Okay, so we I guess we will not do that hymn today. But we are going to start with Come Christians Join to Sing instead. Yeah. 
good friend to us who condescend. His love shall never end. Alleluia. Amen. Praise yet our Christ again. Alleluia. Amen. Life shall not end the stream. Alleluia. Amen. On heaven's blissful shore, His goodness will adore. Sing and forevermore. Alleluia. Amen. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you this afternoon on a very average temperature December day. We lift our praises to you in whatever way we can. So in this Advent season, we wait. Just like at Easter, we wait throughout. And these four weeks provide a very important message to us. Hope, peace, joy, and love. We know you were born to set us free. We know you were crucified and rose again, showing us that there are consequences for our actions. And so in this hour of prayer, show yourself to us in whatever way you can. Through music, scripture, and message. In Jesus' name, amen. 244, come down long and spread to Jesus. Yes, yeah. 
Very good. Please be seated. So the anthem today is Come to Us. All right. Thank you, Heather Sorensen. So I'm going to begin by reading John chapter 1. The word was first. The word present to God. 
God present to the Word. The Word was God, in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through Him. Nothing, not one thing, came into being without Him. What came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. There once was a man named John, sent by God to point out the way to the life light. He came to show everyone where to look, who to believe in. John was not himself the light. He was there to show the way to the light. The life light was the real thing. Every person entering life, he brings into the light. He was in the world. The world was there through him. And yet the world didn't even notice. He came into his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed, and would do what he said, he made to be their selves, their child of God's selves. They are the God begotten, not blood begotten, flesh begotten, not sex begotten. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. And now to Psalm 31. clear example of this week's theme. I run to you, God. I run for dear life. Don't let me down. Take me seriously this time. Get down at my level and listen. And please, no procrastination. Your great cave, a high in place. Your high cliff nest, a high place of safety. You're my cave to hide in, my ki my cliff to climb. Be my safe leader, be my true mountain guide. Free me from hidden traps. I want to hide in you. I put my life in your hands. You won't drop me. You'll never let me down. I hate all this silly religion, but you, God, I trust. I'm leaping in sin in the circle of your love. You saw my pain, disarm my tormentors. Be brave. Be strong. Don't give up. Expect God to get here soon. Okay. Now let's talk about what this week means. Hope is defined as anticipating something. And hope sometimes brings disappointment. For example, I thought I was going to work this morning. But the driver decided he didn't need my help today. Now, you don't know what I do. I am a UPS driver helper. But it's not... It's not your usual type of job. It's not your typical Monday through Friday job. It really is... You know... You go in one day... And you don't know. Are you coming back the next day? Are you coming back in two days? 
there was there were 12 days in between shifts now don't forget we had Thanksgiving midst in there too But we can be hopeful that this inconsistency will slowly fade out and it will be more consistent moving forward in, in this peak season. We can also have hope that a new car will come. And obviously, we're well on our way. Up to $2,200 out of 4000 So we're looking for 1800 more and then we'll be good to go. Even a non-personal life. Even, you know. They were hopeful back in Jesus' day. They were hopeful that a new king would come to save them from the Romans. And the Jews, they threw tantrums about everything. Just think about this. Have you guys ever hung out with somebody that no matter what you said, the answer was no. Just let's put this into perspective, shall we? Say you wanted to take them to somewhere you went with somebody else. Now, obviously. You think, okay, you know, this might be fun. But when they say no, that could lead to disappointment. As I talked about last week, with the situation with Charlie, those wounds have not healed. The wounds that he left behind are real. They're real enough to send a clear message of how our lives can be turned upside down just like that within, within the drop of a hat. And these wounds... They're not physical wounds. They're emotional wounds. Wounds that we can't even understand or justify the fact of what was done. Now, don't get me wrong. This happens in pretty much every relationship. Male or female, male or male. It happens all the time. When people choose to not communicate with us and, and explain how they feel, you get this result. You, you get no closure. You get no closure and you're left there wondering what you did wrong. It's quite sad when you think about it. And obviously... You know, 
he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing, but he had no regard for anybody else but himself in getting out of that situation. The fact is, we could sit here all day and we could and we could come up with about a million reasons why that probably happened. But we don't have time for that. You're probably thinking, well, aren't you hoping that he'll come back? At this point, if he does, my answer to him would be, it is too late. And tell him that we have moved on. Because we are not going to be someone's puppet, servant, and we are going to be treated with respect. And that's exactly what we are hoping for here with Josh. To be treated with respect, to be loved equally, and it's the give and take. Some have said that to take a step back and reevaluate the situation. That's exactly what we're doing. Every step that we are taking here, we are evaluating the situation. Like they evaluated the situation that. If a new king came, they would be they would be free. Like when a new car comes, you're back in business. You're able to live your life, not relying on other people. You're able to come and go as you please. Just going back to the Charlie thing real quick. This also has affected... Obviously, it may have affected conversations at work because we know people talk. My biggest fear is somebody will say to my supervisor saying, oh, that kid had, that guy Nick has too many personal problems. He shouldn't be here. Well, that's not a good reason to fire somebody. They might ask me to have a conversation with them and tell them about this situation, about this issue that continues to appear every day. Now, obviously, it appeared today because we are not working today. I honestly hope tomorrow it is back to work. I have Friday off. And I tell you, if it's another 12-day break, I am telling them that I am thinking about just walking away from it. Because it is ridiculous. They wanted, They hired me not to just spend time at home. They wanted help. They got help. Now I know things cannot be helped sometimes. I understand that. And I understand the fact not to take this personally. We can't allow Charlie to control our minds and our thoughts. 
But we can't be hopeful. So consistency comes with this, with this job. A new car comes. And obviously, in, and the ultimate goal is to have a new relationship with somebody. And at the moment, we're working on that with Josh. So being hopeful... As it's good, and it has its disappointments too. But mostly the good of this is we are hopeful that Jesus will come and save us. And that is today's message. Amen. So we come to the place of prayer. It's another one of his gifts where we can bring our lives and the lives of others that we know. Of course, we want to think about the regulars. We want to think about what this weekend might be like. And as always, I'll give you the chance to lift up people that are on your mind. And so the person on today is Christ be our light. Lawyer, Advent brings time for hope. With the distractions of the world, living in fear, living with anxiety. Wondering is there light? Your light shines in us every day. Whether it's at home, at work, at school. A 
hope can be a good thing. But it can also be a sad thing. For example, this morning, thinking I was going to work today and this and a more consistent pattern of being there every day would come. That led to disappointment. But knowing how this job is, sometimes it'll just be like that. Maybe it's a new relationship to put a band-aid on our troubled thoughts and minds. Thoughts and feelings. The heart needs to be quieted. The mind needs to be quieted. And as this year has continued to show time and time again, sometimes you just can't trust anybody. We trusted Charlie to a very high degree. And we loved him very much. But obviously, he had us all fooled. And when we think of the good things that I did with him, but more importantly, the bad that led to sadness, anger, internal rage... Us thinking of wanting to do things that we might regret. So today I would ask that you pray for him. Encourage him to reach out, to give some closure. Also praying for Josh, bleh, excuse me, for Josh Arnold in Enfield and Springfield, and hopefully with the gift that I got him yesterday, can work things out with him. But a little bit closer to home, we pray for the following. Louis always continue to walk over to continue to walk with us every day on the job. We thank you for our pets. We think of Wilbur, Lenny, Willow, and Milo, and all Boston Terriers out there. And being hopeful, we can hope for an end to this ongoing pandemic. Our numbers go back down, and this variant, Omic, whatever this new variant ends, can be kept under control. And for those of you at home watching us or watching on the go, we give you the chance to lift up whoever is on your mind. And so it's to that end. One candle lights the way. The way to that major.
As you said long ago, you are the light of the world. You're the Alpha and Omega. And isn't that prayer you taught us saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right. So in negativity comes positivity. And that positivity is the gift he gives to us in our lives. Whether it's a bad scene, a new job, a new car, a new relationship, or a new hope. And so as always, I invite you to please subscribe to this channel. And check out some of my other videos as well. And will the ushers please come forward as we receive the afternoon's gifts and offering. And the offertory today is Come Light of Christmas.
Please rise. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him, above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. You are light of you are the light of Christmas. Born to set us free. So take these gifts and to so take these gifts and use them to make yourself known throughout the world. As we have come to the end of this service, as we get ready for next week's theme, which is peace. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we will end Advent week one with, with with angels we have heard on high.
Receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he give you hope in whatever endeavor in your lives. And join us again next week for Advent Week 2 of Peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Lord, let us now depart in peace. Who in thy name are gathered here? Disclose the brightness of thy face, and be forever near.